Hey, you there. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today, I have a 6v6 custom match here on the most uh, amazing Neuroxys map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Southwest, ending with Team 2 in the Northeast. Starting off with Team 1 Southeastern player, working our way northward, we have in Tropical Ocean Blue, ready for action, going first land as a UEF. He is a 1,200 to his west. We have in Batman Gray Little going first land as another UEF hit for Team 1. He is a 1,500. In the middle of Team 1's lineup here, we have in Chevy Crimson another UEF hit. It is Amon Ra. He is a 1,900, the highest rated player on Team 1. Going first land to his northeast, we have Stoke Dick going first land as an Aeon. He is a 1,000 rated in Ruby Red. To his west in orange color, oranges, Dragon Slayer going first land as another Aeon for Team 1. He is a 1600. And last but not least, day for Team 1 in royal blue, it is Signal Runner going first land as a Seraphim. He is a 1500. So for Team one side of the map, they have three. We have two Aeon and one Seraphim, which means Team 1 like Cyber and Technology. Starting for Team 2's Southeastern player working away northward as well. We have in glow in the dark green, Croach going first land as a UEF he is an 1100 to his north in trop not, not tropical ocean blue but light oak tan we have martyr one going first land as a seraphim he is an 1800 to his west in the best color in all supreme commander room. it is forest green momo uchiha going first land as a cyber and he is a 1300 and in rust to his northeast in the middle here for team two it is no man going first land as another server from sorry cybern for team two he is a 2000 rated player the highest rated player on team two and in the game overall to his west in barbie pink is little miss murder going first land as another cybern for team two he is a 1400 and last but least hit for team two in pac man yellow is another cybern for team two he is chick 45 45 he is in a 1400 rating as again pac-man yellow so for team two side of the map they have four cybrans one uef and one seraphim which means team two lacks aeon technology and team one of course lacks cybran technology and for 12 players on the map let's take a look at how much we claim they have to scoop up currently sitting at nine thousand, which isn't a terrible amount but it's definitely not as much as you know 12 uh, 6v6 matches i would like to see i usually like to see about a thousand mass roughly per player this is sitting at about i think it's like 700 trying to do math in my head really quick yeah about a little over 700 mass per player but there is a decent amount of mexes to grab in the middle of the map here for both of these teams and most of it does concentrate in the so southern half and the northern half in terms of the lineups there's a Trimex position here for Team One's player, sorry, Team Two's player of 45-45 to go after, and there's a couple of Mexes in the back for the rearguard air slots to grab. Pretty much, that's about it. There's a little bits of no man's land dotted around the map, and of course, a tiny, tiny pond that is uh, not the same level as essentially the rest of the map. So that's probably not going to be used for anything. I mean, I think you could, f I think you could fit a naval facility in there and maybe a unit, maybe. That's probably not going to happen. I highly doubt it. But maybe somebody will hide a comm in there. Who knows? We'll just have to see as the time goes on. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and speed it up just a little bit so that way we can get these comms in places where they can fire at one another. We do see that it looks like it's going to be 1v1 in the northwest here between Signal Runner of Team 1 and 4545 of Team 2. And a lot of the comms for both teams are kind of conglomerating in the middle of the map here. And it might look like it's going to be a repeat scenario in the northwest with Crotch for Team 2 versus Ready for Action for Team 1 on the southeastern side. We may see a little bit of movement here for Literal going eastward. And that's really about it in terms of comms. Looks like, like I said, most of the comms are headed for the middle of the map here. And right north of this pond, we do see production facilities being established by Stotik in the middle. I do hear a little bit of fire outbound. There's a tiny little mole hanging out here for some intel gathering operations for Team 2. 
you can see they can see uh of course little miss murder right next door and they have a little bit of uh you know vision on that side of the map and some radar there is the com of amun ra approaching going for some recoil little miss murder is hanging right next door we might see the first com on com action with momo uchiha might beating that out pushing in against these engineers and a couple of mexes here but the first common come action is amon ra versus little miss murder and of course amon ra is 2000 hit points more than little miss murder there's one tham nearby which has a little bit more dps here of course total versus little miss murder which will force him back for a little bit we do see a split attack outbound from momo uchiha pushing it on the east with a couple of units but now we see dragon slayer versus momo uchiha dragon slayer has 1000 more hit points than momo so again, Team 2 is pretty much for every scenario, but bar two of them are going to be a thousand or more hit points less than their opponents in their, def not default, but their you know stock right off the assembly line uh, point count in terms of hit points. Gun range has been started for Dragon Slayer and gun damage range has been started for literal. We do see that ready for action is hanging out. It hasn't pushed it forward a little bit further. You know, he can probably push a little bit further northward if he really wants to. And it looks like the attention for Crunch has actually shifted more westward than southward, going after Literal with the assistance of Martyr 1. And that upgrade will finish off, unfortunately, for Team 2. Gun speed has been started for Stotik in the middle as well. So one range, one speed. Of course, we do see Nomander moving in to try to push on Team 1. And we do see units outbound to assist this push from Momo, who has retreated with his commander. We do see that Team 2's Little Miss Murder has fallen back going for a gun upgrade. And in the Northwest, Team 2's 4545 pincer maneuvering against Signal Runner. There's a lot of T1 units. Maybe not enough to kill the commander off, but just enough to at least force him back and reconsider his frontline position. The gun speed upgrade still going on here for Nomander. It's still 1v1. A couple of units have come to say hi. But there are more units outbound for Stotik to even the odds. And that gun speed is now online here for, uh, coming online for Dragon Slayer. But we do see that Literal's commander is moving northward to assist. And that gun upgrade is going to be canceled. Wall sections have been built to cut off the retreat of Team 1's commander. He does get around that. And is able to force Team 2 to fall back with the assistance of Literal moving in from the south. Three commanders here for Team 2 versus three commanders from Team 1. One of them is out of the picture on upgrade. Stotik still wants to help, but it is in the yellow. Has to be very careful that Team 2's players don't just bomb rush him and kill him off. And we see a, a slight attack in the east here by ready for action. More of a distractionary tactic more than anything else. Allowing that gun upgrade to get up online. T2 coming online for Signal Runner versus the gun upgrade of 45-45. Lunamus Runner now has his gun upgrade or her gun upgrade online. And Amon Ra is sitting there hanging out. A couple of units do break through the front lines for Signal Runner and causing some havoc for those T1 mexes. But a bomber does come over and wipe both of those off the map. The gun upgrade has been restarted here for Stotik in the middle. And gun advance range has been started for Dragon Slayer. We see two comms and assisting engineers going for that T2 upgrade to establish a nice front line position here for Team 2. And they're going to hunker down right here on the southeastern side of that tiny little pond in the map. We do see that Little Miss Murder coming in from the northwest. Amon Ra does not have a gun upgrade and will be at a disadvantage if he does engage. But he's holding back for the time being. Nano Repair has been started on Literal's Commander 1 to make sure that he can survive lengthy engagements. T2 coming online here for Team 2's crotch. He wants to, again, establish a nice little defensive line in the south. And that gun upgrade is almost done for Team 1's ready for action. More units break through the front lines here for Sigma Runner, or for 45-45 against Sigma Runner. We do see that Little Miss Runner is now over here hanging out, and now in between two commanders for Team 1, both again Dragon Slayer and Amon Ra. Amon Ra going for the his gun upgrade. He needs to be, use that to get that, you know, not necessarily an advantage, but try to force back Little Miss Murder. He is now being blitzed down by the commander, and that uh, gun upgrade will finish shortly. He's targeting the engineers to slow its production. He's at 90%. Amon Ra is falling into the high yellows here, but reinforcements are arriving for Dragon Slayer to force back. Little Miss Murderer T2PD has been built for Signal Runner to force back the gun com of 45-45. So we have multiple calm engagements here going on. We do even see that L Little is pushing in on the east. I'm going to have to split things at least a little bit to catch all of the action going on. There's a lot. 
Loomis Murder is now being forced back by Amon Ra's gun comp and the reinforcements from Team 1's Dragon Slayer. We do see in the north, 45-45 being pushed back by Signal Runner. And it looks like it might be a kill there for Team 1 on that northwestern side. Same here with Little, Little Miss Murder being surrounded by orange forces outbound. And Amon Ra is retreating and that will be the first kill here of the game for Team 1. There he goes. Little Miss Murder is gone, done and dusted. Little now you know, hook maneuvering around Literal and it's going to be a 2v1 scenario between Stotik and Literal's commander in the middle of the map in the north. We do see that 45-45 is now pushing back at Sigmund ever so slightly and that might just be a draw on that side of the map. Literal now being surrounded by forces from Team 2 by Crunch. Looks like he's going after Mar Marta 1's commander. So on the northwest side of things, looks like things have died down for the time being. But in the middle, Marta 1 is being surrounded by Team 1 forces. Lots of cannons firing at one another. Gun upgrades online. PD trying to be built to try to stave off incoming incursions by Team 1. And Little now being surrounded by Crotch forces. His re reinforcements have been destroyed. He's going to get a decent amount of veterans from this, and he's already at 2 star as we speak. We do see that Stoic is in the red, is retreating out of range of that T1 PD. Lots of action did happen. No one surprisingly died in that incursion. And Team 1's Amon Ra is going for a nano repair to wrap up his hit points. And it looks like things have started to die down a little bit here for both of our teams in the middle. T2 PD has been built to force back Stotik even more. And Team 2 has a decent amount of reclaim in the middle of the map to scoop up while we have ready for action. Trying to walk down Crosh on the eastern side. It's a T2 upgrade commander versus a gun upgraded commander. It's the only favor ready for action, but he doesn't want to push too far forward and be caught unawares, be killed off. We do see Literal is moving in. It looks like it's going to be a fade back and hit from the west. And once Literal's commander moves into range, Crotch is going to go down in smoke, especially when ready for action retargets onto that commander. And this is going to be a walk down here by two UBF commanders against another one on Team 2, the only one on Team 2. And we do see an explosion in the west here on Team 1's commander. Dragon Slayer has been walked down by Momo Uchiha. And again, at the same time, just a moments after Team 2 loses crotch to both Literal and Ready for Action. Confirmed kill in the east by Literal's assistance. Team 2 is now essentially encapsulating the middle of the map here. They've grabbed more than 60% of it. Trying to again force Team 1 back out of it. They really want that pond for some reason. There must be some unattaining unattaining unattain I can't say the word. I can't say that word. Um, just some like metal or whatever that's very valuable. Literal pushing in on this northeastern, sorry, southeastern side. Once again, Marta 1 getting more PD online. Lots of T1 forces. Haven't seen a lot of T2s as of yet. It is 11 and a half minutes. We should be seeing T2 being the main stage of units at some point here in a couple of minutes. But a lot of these players are focusing on getting defenses online. Mobile missile launches online. Dealing with the PD emplacements that Marta 1 has built. And on this northern side, we do see that wall sections are being erected to force Team 1's engagements to the west rather than to the east. And gun, sorry, the shield is coming online here for Stotek in the middle. Wants to get more hit points on board. His command is sitting at 8, uh, would gain 8,000 from that upgrade. How is the T3 air facility online? It is for Team 1's Emerald Ra, and it is online for Nomander in the northeast. He is now sitting on dual bases, which means that air advantage will slowly favor Team 2 if Team 1 does not rectify that with another comm. Going for gun, not gun, going for <laughs> air as I see two gun comms fighting one another between Nomander himself and Literal. Nomander would probably retreat about five or so minutes so he doesn't get sniped by Team 1's forces. We do see that large string of engineers with a couple of units assisting Amon Ra, pushing forward, going after the PD emplacements and the calm, of course, of Momo Uchiha on the other side of that pond. Kiel is halfway done here for Stotik. In terms of Ecos, of course, um, of course Team 2's Nomander sitting on dual bases has 100 plus mass income everybody else in the game below that couple of players in the game have 90 and everybody else is even below that with signal runner being the lowest at 33 mass per second i getting a decent amount of efficiency on board his commander will get to two stars with this engagement we see, we see more forces pushing in t2pd being established on the other side of that pond which means that they can 
you know, they can effectively control the entire pond just by themselves. So it leaves a large area of operation for Team Ju to exert on Team 1. Little pushing in once again with his commander just going after a resource. Gathering engineers just trying to feed their family. We do see that ready for action again. Still pushing on this eastern side. Trying to again collapse this eastern side now that the commander of Karach has been defeated. Try to uh, again spend that APM more and more on that eastern side. Ilshis have responded to the threat of Little's commander. One of them gets insta-killed by that overcharge. And Team 1's Little will force these units back and he'll fall back as well. Not willing to be sniped for the time being. Mobile missile launchers in the north here for CH 4545 pushing against Sigma Runner's firebase in the north. He's holding on for now, but his shield will eventually fall if he doesn't deal with all of these uh, mobile missile launchers. I don't see any T3 land as of yet here for Team 1. Team 2 does have T3 land, just as I'm about to say they don't in the form of some cyber forces. So we'll see some bricks and loyalists running the map around the map here pretty shortly. Mobile missile launchers still going after everything in the middle of the map. And now essentially this is no man's land and this is no man's land essentially with the wall sections included. And there's a little bit of no man's land, but we do see forces moving up and a lot of fire beetles accompanying them as well. We could see a possible snipe attempt against Amon Ra's commander. I don't know what exactly how much damage they do on explosion. Let's see, damage one, splash, 6.5, don't know what. Oh, that, yeah, uh, direct fire, 1100, okay. So they do 1100 damage, very interesting. Air fight happens, team one has the advantage ever so slightly in that air fight. There are more units up here to the north, some Corsairs trying to snipe at Super Runner's position. He's gonna reclaim and fall back. He knows he can't hold out, so he's just gonna fall back. You know, cut his losses and call it a day on that northern side. Nano repair has been started by Nomander's commander. He has stealth on board, still staying on the front lines, does not want to retreat. Maybe he'll fall back after the nano repair upgrade. But he just wants to sit there just in case. Stotek getting a nice now artillery base online. Probably needs a couple of volcanoes to be fair, some TMD. But he has his T3 land headquarters very far forward. It cuts the travel time of the units, of course, but the downside is is that Team 2 can easily wipe it out because it is closer to the front line. Literal holding back for the time being, not willing to engage. He has some PD in range as well, going after the PD here for Team 2. I don't think... Does Team 1... Do they have an Omni or something online? I mean, they only have... They have a couple of radar you know, installations, but we do see that Team 2's Martyr 1 is not... Oh, I see. So it's barely out of range, but... The triads are ground firing against nearby units. So it's a little bit of AOE. You can see it goes barely over the uh, the line that those uh, triads are sitting at. See, it they can barely move that. I heard an explosion somewhere. At least maybe I thought it was. We do see that Team 1's signal runner is pushing forward, going after those mobile missile launchers himself. He has gun and T2, so a little bit more hit points on board. Probably needs to benefit from that nano repair upgrade that the Seraphim are definitely known for with their advanced nonsense. You see artillery going after the artillery emplacement here from Momomo Chihas, which just turned into a fire base war in the middle of the map here between those two players. And Amon Ra is pushing forward. There are fire bills. Will this work? Will the fire bills engage the commander or will they not? We do see that Amon Ra continuing to charge. He doesn't see anything that's going on on that side of the map. He doesn't know where the units are because they're being stealthed by those deceivers. Brick moving in to assist will take most of his attention. Gotta send those fire beetles in at some point. This is your opportunity to go for them. It looks like they have been given the orders to move in. If we could see a snipe by fire beetles. Amon Ra, watch out. There's, there's a fire beetles that are going to explode right next to you. He's like, oh no, that's not good. He overcharges, kills off a couple of them before he could they could reach him. And a lot of them don't make contact with the comm. Drops his hit points to 11,000. Could have been a lot more than that but they just wouldn't engage and we do see that team choose 45 45 forces are cutting a path through the fire base and now the main base of Sigma Runner he's trying to do his best to hold them off units from the front are falling back to deal with this push the entire base for Sigma Runner is going to go up in smoke and they're now going to go after Stotix forces and defenses as well gunships being called forth from the air player of team one's Amon Ra to deal with all of these targeting the T2 units first and going after everything else after that. 
We do see a large group of T2 forces in the east here for Martyr 1, and we do see that Littlest Commander pushing forward once again with a nice little pair of shield to give him an additional 3,000 hit points of protection. And those Rhinos are moving in. They might be going after the P-Gens for the air grid. At least that's what I would go after after I went this far in. And all those forces from Stotic have fallen back, have now intercepted most of those forces from Team 2's 45-45 and are doing economic damage, at least trying to at a minimum. Multiple mexes are offline. Small group broke it off from the main group, going after more you know, income, more everything they can. Harbinger is in range. He'll deal with that himself. Martyr 1's defenses have fallen, and this is, again, one of the reasons why Little is pushing forward on the southern side. We do see that Amon Ra is now over here to the north. Again, further away, more and more reinforcements popping up here for Nomander on this northern side. Trying to still use his fire beetles, but I don't think uh, Amon Ra is going to fall for that. He's already back up to essentially full HP after that engagement. Now he's sitting at four star veterancy, and that attack is stopped by Team 1. But look at the damage that it has caused on the western side of the map here for specifically Sigma Runner. He still has some sort of a base online, but a lot of his eco is gone. He's sitting at 19, 17, 21 mass a second. Number keeps changing with the reclaim, of course. And overall, 19 minutes on the clock. Team 1 sitting at one player gone, that being a Dragon Slayer. So it's a 5v4. Team 2 losing Crotch and Little Miss Murder before the 20-minute mark. Maybe they'll see another departure in the next 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes that... 30 seconds or so, but I highly doubt it. Team 1 sitting at 430 mass income. Team 2, the Northeastern team, sitting at 512. That is a decent discrepancy at 19, 20 minutes on the clock. Not a terrible amount, but it w will decently, obviously, favor Team 2 as time goes on, unless Team 1 can strike back at Team 2's eco reserves. And again, at this point in the video, let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. And of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching. Let's go ahead to see where this gunship threat is moving in on the north here for Team 1's Amon Ra. He's going after the T2 land headquarters, upgrading to T3. Going to deny that for CH4545. That's going to hurt. He's already going after the Mexes as well. Just zooming out really quick just to see if there's any other major incursions. Looks like Martyr 1's forcing back, ready for action in the south. Gunship's still moving in, going after all the resourcing options. ASFs are moving in. Another air fight will commence. They will kill off another mechs or two before those gunships are fully destroyed. Of course, there is some AA units nearby here for both Nomander and Team 2's Momo Uchiha. The gunships have been dealt with, but another mechs has taken offline. And that discrepancy, which was about a, roughly a 90 to 100, is now about 60. Oh, sorry, it's now about, well, eh, now it's back to 100 again, so... Eh, it kind of keeps flipping back and forth. Another gunship over here going after more and more forces going after that resource generating mechs over here to the north. AA trying to stop this gunship will not be successful. Mobile missile launcher being heavily assisted to the north launching missiles against Nomander. I would assume Team D has been built to defend what resources he has left. I have not seen any strap bombers as of yet but with Team 1 having the advantage in air. Kind of surprised to not see him go for that. Looks like he's going for more of the broadsword approach. And in terms of eco for individual players, Team 1's Amon Ra sitting at 160. And the highest next to him is literally at 140. Team 2, there are two players at 200, that being Nomander on dual base and Martyr 1 also on dual base. Anybody else is, you know, below that, of course. Nomander still pushing in forces here to, again, hold the middle of the map. Here. There's a couple of mechs that he is denying for Amon Ra. He's going for another T1 Max and then going to just retreat for the time being. And that slow push of land units is starting to hamper on Team 2's eco. You can see that Team 1 is now caught up. 560 versus 590. A couple of sniper bots in the mix as well as, of course, some Titans and the beloved Percy. Because that Percy is, one, is the best T3 unit in the game. Obviously, that's my opinion, but in terms of just direct combat prowess, there's really nothing that can hold a candle to it, in my opinion. We do see more AA being augmented into those land forces here for Team 2 just to deal with Team 1's AA prowess. They want to knock it out, or at least deny it at the time being. And this combined push of three armies to the south there for Team 1 will definitely force back Team 2's modern forces. 
And we see a chicken is now being established for Martyr 1. It is still under construction, though. Will be a couple of minutes before it is online. Titans lead the way, cutting out all of the uh, weaker of the units, while the uh, bigger units are moving in behind them as well, supported by a ton of T2 support. I feel like either Martyr 1 or Ready for Actions to switch control of these units to one or the other so that they're easier to micro them a lot better, even though, I mean, they, even so, they are both UVF, so that, I guess that would make sense. Amon Ra has been targeted by those bricks for deletion, and unfortunately for those broadswords, they weren't able to stave off the incoming incursion. Well, they were, but they suffered heavy losses, so not really the best scenario for them. And we do see that uh, Team 1 Stotix forces are being slightly forced back, but I think they're more repositioning than anything else. And the attack on the eastern side is still forcing its way forward. A lot of T2 units now engaging one another with the Titans and Percy's essentially falling back due to that. Well, the Percy's are slow, to be fair, so there's that. But it uh, looks like those forces from Stotik are moving in to assist the push on this eastern side. And they're just going to keep on going. Chicken is trying to be built as fast as it can to counter this threat from Team 1. But Ready for Action has now carved a path through and is now... Still hasn't gained the advantage in... Oh, no, oh, oh, that's getting close. A couple of mechs has come offline. Team 1 will have the mass advantage. Per second, at least. And if they get to these T2, T3 mechs, it will be the case. T2 PD being built in lieu of going for full chicken support. You see in the western side of this, uh, eastern side, these units still engaging, still pushing in Titans and Percy's, really augmenting those the firepower on board of those units. T2 mechs is coming offline. Nine mass... 6 mass, 27 mass of course with the T3 mixes. It looks like the unit's trying to get out of range of the PD but these T3 engineers are just going to build more and more along that eastern edge and force back these units. Looks like they might get a T3 mix and that might be it. And we do see the forces from Stotik have slack, so it's fallen behind and they're now trying to follow the path. Probably with not as much success that uh, the other UEF forces are experiencing for Team 1. The 3 Max is in range. Ilshi's trying to distract these forces ever so slightly, but it's only for a moment. And those Mexes are coming offline. There goes a 27 mass per second Mex of the T3 variety. Team 1 is now in the lead for mass generation at 720 versus Team 2's almost 700. We do see again still attempts by Team 2 to go after Amon Ra's commander, but he's holding position, not willing to retreat. Monkey Lord is in the yellow. Chicken is almost in the green. And now these forces are going after the mass assassinations of Nomander. Bricks are moving in to assist from Momo Uchiha to deal with this threat. Looks like there's one Percy remaining. They still can engage T3 Mexes, but deciding to hold position. And those Percy's are going to be outnumbered. It will kill off a brick. Oh, it won't kill off a brick. It was one couple of seconds or so. And it looks like they might get some more. Uh, they should be focusing on that T3 Mex, realistically. But they're going after the PD emplacements instead. Yeah, I think they should be going after that mech, but that's definitely unfortunate. Team 2 will be a little bit lucky that the forces are distracted by the defenses, not by the mechs. And units through the middle going after Martyr's commander. He is falling into yellow, but there's a lot of PDA to protect himself as well as trying to stop the construction of the chicken, which they at least do for the time being. But a lot of mass on this map, side of the map for Team 2 to scoop up. You can see just the trail of uh, essentially mass, essentially. I was going to say trail of tears, but that is not what that is. 62,000 mass. Uh, 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 yeah, 61,000 mass on the field currently, which is a decent amount of mass, a lot more than the game started with, of course, but it's definitely going to put a hamper on Team 2's offensive capabilities. But the Monkey Lord is online, and it's going to be moving to the east to deal with all these incoming forces and engineers for Team 1. More and more artillery being built in the middle for Stotik and going for a Colossus, his own experimental. It's almost in the green. First experimental, of course, of the game is the Monkey Lord. Usually is, not always, but usually is due to its being the lowest cost experimental in the game. Do you see that little was holding position down south? And of course, already for action has fallen to his main base. Just wanted just in case he tries to get sniped at by team two. And more and more air grid being established here by Team 1. A radar system online. I would like to see a radar system online in the middle for both teams. Nomander has one close to the middle. But this one could easily be a T3 if it is upgraded to do so. And the artillery base and, you know, suitsayer position here for Momo looks like it's under threat. 
This is the range in which he can see. It's a large section of the map. And it's also a 10 by 10. So this, you know, usually these matches are 20 by 20s, but these are 10 by 10s. So it's a, uh, it's a smaller map. So that suits there is providing oodles and oodles of information for team two. We do see some Ravager creep started here for Literal just to again protect the eastern edge. He's taken over defensive operations from ready for action. I don't know what he's going to be doing instead, but it looks like he's just building some more Percy's. And again, building some AA. He also has his own Omni online over here to the east as well. Love to see that back up just in case. Colossus is online for Team 1's. Stochik in the middle of the map. Monkey is over here to the... Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, it is there. Just look, I couldn't see the circle for a brief second. And on the western side of things, looks like Signal Runner has uh, kind of just hung out for the time being. There's no real offensive uh, firepower going on this western side for either team. They've kind of just rode it off for the time being. Without CH4545 spearheading things, it's kind of just fallen to the wayside. And he's just hanging out for the time being, just going for as many mechs as he can. Just again, scale his eco up. He's still sitting at a hun under 100. Actually, CH, excuse me, is in the game still. But looks like his comm is just in the northeast. He's fallen back. I don't know if he had to go at some point, And then he's just gifted everything to Normander. So he isn't gone. I will uh, correct myself. He's just taking himself out of the game for that, the time being, it looks like. We do see that Monkey Lord is pushing forward, but that Colossus is waiting for him. There's a lot of brick support in here, both from Nomander and a little bit here from Momo. He should give those over to Nomander. That would be a lot easier to manage those forces if they're underneath one commander's uh, command. We do see Chicken Online here that Martyr 1 was building for a while ago. Team 1, do you have a counter to this? You are building a Monkey Lord in the form of Literal. But the Seraphim commander for Team 1 is on this western side, so... The only real offensive, like, direct ex experimental on the land that Team 1 has is the Colossus, which will give Team 2 the advantage, being able to produce multiple chickens. Well, one chicken, I guess. And multiple players with Siren technology for monkeys and crabs. Missiles raining in, poking and prodding at the forces here for Team 2. Snowmander just keeping them in holding patterns for the time being. And at this point, I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because it's starting to die down on the action a little bit. We had a lot of just essentially calm on calm action and whatnot for a while straight. And now it's kind of died down. Everybody's kind of rethinking things, moving things, positioning them, all that sort of things. I don't see, again, still no action in the northwest. Looks like just kind of building up a couple of bricks, but that's really about it. Team 1, are you building anything in the back line? We do see Ready for Actions building his own Fat Boy. So two Fat Boys soon to be online here for Team 1 on that southern side. And still nothing else. Large amounts of just P-Gens and land factories and whatnot being produced by Stotic. Team 2, are you building anything spicy in the back? Uh, no. More T2 artillery, more air grid. That's really about it. No nukes, no artillery, no game enders, no nothing. It is 30 minutes on the clock. The players should be thinking about how to end the game, not only just to survive it. Because if you play the game just to survive, you, prob you probably won't win. Doesn't mean you won't, but you probably won't. Does look like the monkey is going to engage. The Colossus is moving to the east, though. Will the monkey continue to go to the middle, or will it be distracted and go to the east? Looks like they're going to engage that chicken. Looks like the Colossus has actually turned around and go, Nah, it's probably not a good idea. Large amount of purses over here as well. There are some absolvers in the mix going after the shield generator, the anti-shield generator of the, uh, the Aeon faction. Doesn't do a lot of damage. It does I think it's 20 hit points when it actually hits a target if that's not shielded. So, I mean, it's something. It's not great, but it's something. We do see some T3 spearheads online here in the east. I can tell with the large breadth of those missile launches when they move. Makes me think they're going to go like all the way to the back line, but they just don't if they have to circle back. And the Colossus has uh, essentially intimidated the monkey to fall back. Team 2 producing another chicken and more of them as we speak. Spy planes moving in to get a view on the other side of the map gets denied. At least they have some intel, but not as much as they probably would have liked to have. Ras being built here by Amon Ross Commander. Scale his eco even more. Fatboy is online, and this will probably provoke Team 2's defensive forces. Because that Fatboy can attack at ranges that experimentals cannot. So the crab has the second longest range, and then I think it's the crab, the chicken, 
the Colossus than the Monkey, I think is how it works. The Monkey does have its uh, additional, its like secondary fire, but I know that that doesn't, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Fire Beetles are moving in, going after that Colossus, but they are spotted by Team... Oh, that's the wrong one. From Team 1, and they are destroyed on their path in. That Omni nearby provided enough... Uh, you know, red, uh, Intel to be like, we can see you, so that's not going to work anymore. That is the downside with the Fire Beetle. If there's an Omni in range, there they go. They're not probably going to reach their target. Still, you know, Firebase Wars still commencing here between these two players in the middle of the map. They haven't given up on that fight. But Fatboy starting to poke and prod at defenses on the eastern side with the Bricks. Not Bricks. With the Percy's and Titans. No, no Titans anymore. Just Percy's. Looks like it's just Percy's and Spearheads, no Titans. I do like to have a Titan or two in the mix just because of their uh, rapid-fire nature dealing with weaker units. You can blitz them down a lot better than just having a, uh, a single-shot rifle kind of thing. Missiles raining in, going after land facilities. The uh, Bricks, Bricks, keep saying Bricks, the Percy's will fall back due to the range on the chicken. But the Fat Boy is going to move in. T2 Artillery trying to force back that Fat Boy. It's not going to do enough work, unfortunately. The artillery, actually T3 Artillery, excuse me, will not be enough to force that... Uh, Fat Boy back in. All of the attention from Team 1 is focusing on this eastern edge. They may combine this army and push in just like they did earlier on, or they may not. Large group of ASFs to the west. It looks like they possibly had a fight. Because I don't see a lot of ASFs here for Team 2, so apologies for missing that fight if I did miss it. Which I'm assuming I did, considering there's a lot of ASFs for Team 1, and not a lot for Team 2, and I feel like he would have had a lot more than what he has currently. So... Team 1 has air dominance, if not supremacy, sitting at 125 ASFs. Team 2's Nomander sitting at 23. So, I mean, I'll call it supremacy because it's over 100 ASFs, but I usually like to say 150 or so to really make it like a point that they have air. And there's really nothing that Team 2 can do about it unless there's massive amounts of AA that will chew through all that ASF, which... Um, you know, might be the case here. Large group of uh, mobile missile, uh, mobile missile, stationary missile launchers, though. I wonder what they're going for. What's the range on these things in the 10v10? That's the range. They could snipe Literal's commander. That'd be very interesting, but I don't know if they'll go for that. Wow, mobile miss uh, stationary missile launchers in the 10v10 are kind of scary. That is a long range. Hmm. Fatboy is almost online here for ready for action. SMDs coming online here for Team 1. I don't see any efforts on Team 2 as of yet to go for Nuke. They also have an SMD. Crab coming online here for Nomander. Chicken almost online here for Martyr 1. He still has one Monkey, one Chicken. Team 1 has one Fat Boy, one Colossus, who has now shifted back to the middle. This Colossus just has... He's getting his steps in, walking back and forth across the map. I'm going to speed it up once again because it's again slowing down just ever so slightly again. Large no man's land here on the eastern side here, mainly on Team 2's side of the map. So that is mass that Team 2 would be getting, but is currently not. Team 1 at 1.5k income, Team 2 at 1.2. That lead has shifted quite uh, dramatically in Team 1's direction. A couple of options breach the perimeter and go after T3 Mexes here. And that's going to, you know, again, just drop that mass income even more for Team 2 collectively. There are bricks moving in to intercept, and those Optimus trying to get out of range as fast as they can, but they're not going to get anywhere, unfortunately, more than that. They did their job killing off a couple of mechs. There was a T2 they could probably might have grabbed, but it did look like they get they got out of range. Look at that. I'm surprised they did, and those bricks were chasing them, but... Hmm. Team 2 should team two should see him. Yeah, they see him, with especially with that Suse online. They're just not... Paying attention, I guess. There is a monkey on the western side here for Team 2's Nomander pushing in against this line of PD. Gunships moving in to assist as well. Silk Nomander's going to turn around maybe try to overcharge it. That's a lot of damage. Misses the overcharge. Goes after the brick instead. But there's a lot of PD here. The monkey will focus down the commander of Silk Runner, but I think he'll be fine. Overcharge kills off another brick. And those... Uh, it's not going to kill off the comm. Maybe if the uh, monkey went straight for the comm, it would have been different. But Silicon Runner is fine for the time being. Our saw bomber is under construction by the air player of no. Uh, sorry, Amon Ra. He has been gifted over some Sayer from technology. All you need is the one engineer. It's very weird watching other units, other factions' units build other stuff. So like all the UEF, the way they build it, usually it's just that box that slowly collapses essentially. 
this one they're quote unquote growing the unit so they're like i can't really help you in that way so we'll just try to do what we can <laughs> but, but not really that boy online artillery raining in going after the percy's holding position Missile launchers are outbound going after the fat boy. That is going to be a kill. That fat boy is going to try to move, but there's no time for him to move. Maybe he'll move ever so slightly. Will it be enough? Oh, it will miss just barely. Good sniper attempt by Team 2. It wasn't successful. Had the body blocking, but a little bit stronger for Team 1's ready for actions forces. It would have gotten the kill. The shield is down at a minimum for the fat boy, but no hull damage has been inflicted, unfortunately. And again, still, it's just kind of, they're almost like waiting on bated breath. They're just waiting for somebody to make the first move and then they'll engage. The monkey lord over there was an exception. But this, I feel like this eastern side is going to be a one and done kind of scenario. It's whoever wins the middle fight will probably win the game. But there's a lot of units online for both of these teams. So it's going to be a lot to chew through. Second chicken online for Martyr 1 going for another chicken as we speak. Grab is now online for No Man. Oh, it's been gifted over to... Uh, literal, uh, literal. Given over to Momo. The second crab is almost online as well. Team 1 has multiple Colossus online as well. And multiple Fat Boys now online as well. I keep saying as well a lot. First satellite is online for the UEF player of Literal going for his second. Might provoke Team 2 to engage. Artillery raining in on the units in the range of the artillery. And those shields are down. This artillery position will go up and smoke. And that bomber is inbound. And we'll think better of it, given the AA and the ASFs nearby. Will Team 1 just engage it and call it a day? And uh, no, but lots of casualties were inflicted on Team 1's Air Force. That's a lot of unnecessary fire. That Awasa needs to land its bomb right there, and it would kill off a lot of that AA support. And now we see that Amundra sitting at 174, and Nomander sitting at probably 120 or something. Wow, 129. Wow, that was a really good guess. Jeez. I mean, it's on the higher spectrum of 120, but you know, still. And those two red commanders still hanging out. Bunch of PD to protect themselves, preventing any sort of telemaser nonsense. Because there are three Cybern commanders remaining on Team 2. Team 1 has you know, lost their one of their UEFs. So, I mean, those... Uh, that teleporter nonsense is still there. Colossus moving without any support. Missile launchers inbound. Going to barely miss because they were leading the target. And Soothsayer going to be built to get some more intel operations online. Monkey Lord needs to be retargeted because that Colossus is uh, could easily kill the Monkey Lord off first. And the T3 support is inbound as well. Sniperbot's moving in. And that uh, Monkey Lord getting tons of free damage, essentially. Both of these Colossus will go down. They really want the crab dip, but there's a second one being built ever so slightly and another one here for Nomander. There goes that first Colossus and the first Crab. The second one does go down. Monkey Lord is in the yellow. Sniperbot's trying to put that uh, Monkey Lord down and more and more units from Team 1 Stotek moving in to intercept. I don't think it'll kill off the Monkey Lord but the two chickens will again deal with the reinforcements from Team 1. That's essentially a mass gift for Team Two from Team 1 in the middle of the map. Definitely unfortunate. Awasa Bomber looks like it went after the base over there to the north. Now there's even a bigger No Man's Land in the east here between both of those teams. Chicken's sitting on the, <laughs> the other side of the pond. And like, come at, have at thee. <laughs> this is our pond. Go away. Uh, it's very entertaining. Chicken's just singing, hanging out on the other side of the pond. And this is just a bloodbath here for Team 1 Stotic forces. Both of these uh, chickens doing tons of damage. Little has been, has defeated CH4545. Looks like he teleported in to assist, but Team 1 PD wrecked his face. And it is now a official 5v3 in favor of Team 1 with CH4545 being defeated. Because he gifted over mo most of his stuff, so he essentially took himself out of the game. And then officially took himself out of the game doing with that move. We do see mobile missile launch. Oh, mobile missile launches. Missile launches outbound going after TMD, I guess. Don't know really what they're going after. Oh, going after mechs, it looks like. Kills off a couple of mass storages. And does kill off that T3 mechs. Great grab here by Team 2. 
the eco discrepancy is still heavily in Team 1's favor at 1.7k versus 1.1. We do see a second satellite has now been constructed by Literal, and a nuke is online here for ready for action. We do see large groups of <laughs> all these ASFs just sitting here on those air staging facilities. Emissary has been started for Stotik. Bad Boy moved in to secure the reclaim, or at least deny the reclaim operations of Team 2. And the attack will commence on this middle up this middle side of the map. Percy's are moving in to secure the reclaim. They really, they really want this pond. And the ASFs are waiting. Satellites are targeting all the T3 mexes here for Team 2's Nomander. He's dropping eco quite significantly, which explains the discrepancy in mass income. Team 2's Nomander at 380, Team 1's Amon Ra 400, and then Stotik at 400, and then even Literal at almost 375 matching Nomander. Nomander's now back up to 400, but the attack does stop. Crabs moving in to assist. Lots of fire beetles as well, intermixing that force as well. I would like to see that fat boy from Team 1's uh, ready for action over here, but I don't see it. I don't know where it went. And Awasa Bomber moving in, going after something. Looks like it actually hit some ASF. Uh, it hit some ASFs, excuse me. Isn't the first time I've seen that, but that's obviously disappointing here for, for Amon Ra. ASFs just going to airlock Team 2 at this point. ASFs are, have been built by Team 1, Team 2's monitor as well. And Scathus is online. Team 2 will, sorry, Team 1 will see that. And looks like the ASF fight might actually go Team 2's way. There's a lot of AA underneath this fight. Looks like it might just be a draw for the most part. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be mainly a draw. Team 1 will end up a little bit more than Team 2, but there is, of course, a couple of Colossi. There's a you know, Sentinel Bomber over there. It's not really feeling great here for Team 1 dumping all that mass. And, of course, there's the tons of mass littered around Team 2's base over here for Nomander. But that Scath is coming online. Team 1 knows about it. And they're going to go after it. They can see it on screen. Or they can see it on vision. They're still going after all the mass uh, income now going up to the T3 land and air facilities next, I would assume. Missiles outbound going after the fat boy down here. It does not pierce the shield. Sorry, it does pierce the shield, but it doesn't uh, do really any damage. That's, I think, the second or third snipe attempt on that fat boy. I still don't know where the other fat boy went for ready for action. He must have lost it or something because I don't see it. How's his nuke going? It is almost loaded. Team 1's emissary is almost in the green. It's about two-thirds the way there to being fully completed. So it's all about will the Scathus finish before Team 1's emissary finishes. And those satellites still just punching through everything that Nomander owns. Targeting all the P-Gens. Needs more shields to defend that air grid. And if that goes up in smoke, that's a huge loss for Team 2. I hear Autumn's firing. I just can't tell. For oh, they're up there to the north. That's where they are. Using that same vector of attack from earlier on. T1 bombers moving in. There's a, a T3 pigeon right here. Oh, there goes some. Oh, I think those were eat. Oh, those are mass fabs. Looks like those are mass fabs. And now it's going to target that uh, T3 pigeon. And the the air grid is going down. The pigeons are being reclaimed to prevent the cascade effect. But this is still devastating for Team Two. 44 minutes on the clock. Team 1, you know, will have the air advantage most plainly seen. Missile launchers are outbound going after the Colossus. Have they read the, you know, the leading of the target? This could be huge. Will they hit the Colossus? No, they miss. They, they miss entirely. Definitely unfortunate. Colossus now going after a T3 Max. He's trying to go after that crab. And the fight will break down once again. Multiple units from Team 2's forces are here to assist from different factions being Seraphim and Cybran versus the only Aeon force. A couple more, you know, Harbingers move in. This isn't really going to go Team 1's way, though. There's so many bricks. There's so many experimentals for Team 2. It's not really going to go anywhere. That's just a mass dump from Team 1. But an emissary is online, and Mavor has been started by Amon Ra. And that artillery is targeting that SMD, it looks like. Trying to take it offline, which they've taken the shield offline. Another shot will kill off the SMD. This one 
is about to be loaded and looks like the SMDs are possibly the target. Looks like the shield emitters are also the target here for Literal's uh, forces. There is a counter artillery online for Team 2 outbound from Martyr 1. It's over here, right here, hiding. It's hiding from my view. It's gone up to the air grid and annihilated it. Ooh, and Nuke is outbound from Team 1's ready for action going after this. It will probably kill off a crab, if not a monkey lord as well. And that uh, emissary is still targeting that SMD. The SMD has taken a hit. It's fine for now. But now we have four lasers, four satellites on. Actually, excuse me, five satellites. That one just finished. For Team 1's literal, we do see that the nuke is half or third loaded. There it goes. Almost kills off the Megalith Cup. Boom. How much mass did it kill off? Uh, 15,000. And it's not great for a nuke, but it, it did a lot of damage. That's better than nothing. It did a lot of damage to a crab, so it's something, I guess. Shield grid protecting that SMD. The Momo Uchiha Skathis is in the yellow. And all of the satellite focus is on that uh, artillery emplacement. I feel like if the emissary goes over and the shields are down, the power reserves are down, the satellites don't know what the fuck is on. They're like, go after everything, go after everything. <laughs> shields pop back online at the last second. They almost got all of those emitters. Oh, but that is not great here for Martyr 1. He needs to get his power situation under control. It is not going to be a good, good day for him. Looks like those ASFs trying to block some of the shots. The P-Gen is offline. Need to target those uh, emitters. This one turns back on. But this one's going to fall offline here pretty shortly. There goes that P-Gen. And there goes a couple of engineers as well. The shield is down. The shield is down. And that is going to be a target on all of the emitters remaining. And there goes that artillery for Team 2. They're going after those satellites. More shields are being built around it. The air grid is gone. Team 2 still has their air grid. It's a little bit, you know, just battered, but it's fine. And now the satellites are retasked onto that SMD. Once the SMD is down, there is this one over here that can still protect stuff, but they're targeting this one first. That Scathus is in the green. How is the uh, big giant artillery of the UEF going? Well, it's uh, still in the red. Second Emissary is coming online as well for Team 1 Stotik. And those lasers, of course, just have killed off thousands, if not tens of thousands of mass income. Not, I wouldn't say tens of thousands of mass income, thousands of mass income for Team 2. Considering Team 2 is sitting at a thousand mass, Team 1 sitting at almost, actually they're sitting at double that. All the pigeons and the emitters are being targeted, trying to cause a little bit of a volatile explosion nonsense. Do see some spy planes inbound, emissary shot will land. The shield is offline. It still protects the SMD, but barely. But the emitters are still being targeted by all those satellites from the UEF. This, uh, oh, it's going to go offline. A lot of the build support goes down in smoke as well. Team 2 is being just ripped apart by satellites being glassed out of existence. The shield is down. The SMD will fall. ASF's trying to block some of the shots by essentially, you know, just body blocking the, you know, lasers of course oh the emissary hit a couple of asfs team two is using their asfs as much as they can the scathis is about to come online will the scathis be online when it you know it will that will the satellites break through before the scathis is online that's the words i was looking for and all of the build power all of the apm focused on this point Team 2 is losing territory in the north and not really in the south, just mainly in the north. And those shields have fallen. The shield emitters have fallen. But the Scathis is online. The Scathis is online. Fire those shots as much as you can, Scathis, because you're probably not going to get a lot of them. Build shields, build shields, build shields, build shields, build shields. have emissary fire raining down as well the comb of momo uchiha is hanging on and that's got this fire raining on the emissary and the ooh, and that group of asfs that just flew on by Ooh, that was rough that was rough to see and the shields are coming offline offline online offline online offline they're just trying to keep that scathless online this is team two's last hope 
If this falls, the game is over for Team 2. I think there's really no hope coming back from that. And just multiple shields being upgraded. Nuke is outbound. Where is it going to land? It can't land here because there's an SMD next door. They could try to edge nuke it, though. So no Mander sitting at, you know, oh, no, there's no way they can no edge nuke it. They'd have to be, no, it's definitely out of range. Where is it going? I wonder, oh, it's going over here to the east. And the uh, Mavor has been denied by the Scathus fire. The issue is, is that once the Scathus has dealt with the Emissary, he has to deal with the satellites that Literal has. He's getting more and more shields to protect that investment. Nuke does land. Kaboom! Just poking and prodding at Team 2's exterior defenses. SM, not SMB. Nuke at 46,000. I got a couple more. A couple more thousand mass killed off that. Chicken fight over to the west here. Looks like a crab did try to assault the main base for a signal runner, but just got denied. Shields just cannot seem to hold for long term. They're just popping back on and off, on and off. How are the power reserves for everybody? Not great. Oh, that's not bad. And no Nomander's doing not terrible, but not great. More ASFs just sacrificing themselves to protect that Scathus. Looks like the Scathus has uh, switched targets, not going after the Emissary, now going after those satellites. More and more shields are being built, being assisted by ready for action he's building the shields and literal is building the satellites love to see that assistance here on these uef commanders for team one and the rt3 shielding a lot of them are severely weak you can see low low capacity now the barrage is inbound looks like the satellites have a uh, stopped firing. They're actually going after all the P-Gens. Like, okay, well, I'm done with this. I'm just going to take the P-Gens off and call it a day. Ooh, the Scathus is starting to break through the shields for Team 1's literal. There's a lot of satellites undefended and some of them have been hit. Oh, will Team 2 win with the Scathus or will Team 1 hold out against the Scathus threat? Shield is going to come offline here ever so slightly. More shields are being built to protect, but I think Team 1's idea is that you take out the power reserves for everybody and they can't power the shields and then that's it. Pigeon is going offline. Going to prevent the Cascade, though, with a quick little uh, reclaim order. There's so many satellites, they can fire almost nonstop. There goes the Pigeons. And there go the rest of them. How is the satellites doing? Shields are barely holding. Some resistance is going down as well to you know keep that capacity up. But all of the Pigeons for Team 2's Martyr 1 have been taken offline. He's still at 50, which means he has a couple more reserve, but it's not doing great. This this shield is actually not protecting that Pigeon, so that's gonna hurt. That will make him negative, I think. No, he's still positive. Just barely, but he's taking a lot of his stuff offline. Martyr is <laughs> just slightly, slightly gla grazed by that satellite. <laughs> and Literal thinks he's done enough uh, power damage to Team 1. Or sorry, to Team 2. Second Emissary is online, and those shields fall off almost instantaneously. That is not great. And we do see a missile barrage inbound. Colossus to the north here for Stotic. Has he led the target finally? Will it impact at the right moment? Well, it does a decent amount. It doesn't get all of them, but it gets a decent amount of them. The emitters have gone offline. Most of them have. The Scathus is open for business for those you know, satellites to poke and prod at it. Shield goes... Oh, the shield is just enough to hold on. Scathus is still fine. It's in the yellow, but it's still fine. The satellites are still fine. Oh, Emissary Fire raining in. We'll take out most of the shield strength. Oh, they're being assisted as much as they can. Team 2 is holding on for dear life. Colossus moving to the north. It has been spotted, of course. And the uh, Scathus is taken offline by a combined satellite, artillery, and strat bomber. You know, just bombing. GG says Martyr 1. No one sat, die. Misclick says no mander. Oh, for um, pausing the game. Yeah, only good at T3 artillery. Yeah, it's pretty true. And T3 artillery. Uh, yeah, I feel like for the price that you pay for the Scathus versus T3 artillery, I would say that. 
Especially if it's a heavily fortified, shielded position. If it isn't, then it's fine, but eh. Lots of engineers surrounding Momo and Team 2 recalls. They know that they know the game's over. And there it goes. Team 1 wins the game at 54 minutes and 4 seconds on the clock. And MVP for this game is going to be very difficult because Literal's, she Literal's satellites killed so much mass per second for Team 2. I mean, there were tons of T3 mixes taken offline by him alone. I mean, let's see, you got 60,000 mass killed, 61,000 mass killed, 30, 40,000 mass killed, 73,000 ma 70, 73, mass killed, 20,000. Like, these satellites killed a ton of mass for Team 2 in structures, in P-Gens, in, you know, mass per second, everything. Scathis. Uh, Stotic held the middle quite well. There were some attacks that weren't super great in the middle that he did. He kind of donated some mass, but he tried to poke in. He at least attempted to do so. I did like the run by on the north. It didn't really achieve a lot, unfortunately, but it did distract Team 2 ever so slightly. And then, of course, we also had Stotic's artillery, which really came in handy going after just the Scathus alone. Really kept Team 2's attention on the Scathus and the satellites. But I think with the amount of satellites that were built and the amount of work that he could get done with them, I think Literal gets the MVP award just barely, I think, because Stotic did a very good job. Signal Runner was pushed you know, back and forth on the Western side, which doesn't mean that he did anything bad. It's just it wasn't – he was very solid. That, that's a good way to put it. And then Air Grid, of course, was taken out. Doesn't look like Amonrod. He tried to rebuild it later on, but he kind of just kept whatever ASF he had online producing some gunships. But I think – Overall, I think literally eked it out from Stotic just a little bit more. But let me know down in the comments if I'm right or wrong about that pick. Of course, if you I haven't done, if you haven't, not I haven't, if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so very much for watching to the end, 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 end of the video. And I will see all of you in the next one.